Hi everybody. This is a redo of chapter 22. The last time I recorded it, there was no sound. Sorry about that. So we're reading chapter 22. Oh, there's the cat. Hmm, will we be able to read today? You have to move. <laughs> Where the Mountain Meets the Moon by Grace Lynn. <clears throat> We had just seen the king at the end of chapter 21. Min Lee shook herself from her shock. The king, Min Lee said, I can't lose him now. And in a panic, she began to run after the tattered figure. And it was quite a chase, or it would have been if the beggar had realized he was being followed. He wove in and out around people and bins of rice each step taking them closer to the unused areas of the city. Behind a pile of discarded baskets, Minley thought she had lost him, but luckily the gray sleeve of his loose jacket waved at her, and she saw him round the walled corner of the inner city. As an abandoned wagon hid her from his view, she saw him push against a portion of the wall. With a slow groan, the wall moved. It's a secret door to the inner city, Min Lee gasped, and she was able to reach it just before it closed completely. With both hands, she pressed hard against it and the door pushed open. And like a lid of a jewelry box, the door opened into a landscape of radiant colors. The bamboo, pine, and plum leaves seemed to shine in the sun as if carved from emeralds and the accents of the pink and red flowers were like nestled rubies. Steps away from her feet, Minley could see a patterned pathway made of water-worn pebbles. The central jade green lake mirrored the arching tile roofs of the pavilions and the rough beauty of large weathered rock sculptures. A winding covered walkway lifted up from the cloudy water like a lotus flower. It could only be the palace garden. But Bin Lee barely noticed this. Instead, she stood with large eyes, staring at the figure in front of her. The beggar was wiping his face with a delicate white cloth, and Min Lee saw again that he was not an old man at all. In fact, he was younger than Ba. The gray of his hair was wiped away with the cloth as well, and his beard and head were as glossy black as Min Lee's. His gray rags had been cast off in a pile next to him, and he was clothed in a bright yellow silk, the color of the sun. Intricate dragons and multicolored clouds that matched the designs of the gold bracelet he wore were embroidered on his robes and glittered in the light. There was no doubt now that he was the king. Then the king turned around and saw her. At his glance, Minley shrank to the ground in a humble kowtow. Your Majesty, Minley breathed, and her knees could feel the thumping of her heart in her chest. Caught, Minley heard him say, and she peeked up to see the king looking at her with the same amused expression he'd had as a beggar watching the people eat the peaches. He shook his head at her. With his eyes twinkling at her, he could have been the young father of one of her village friends. And by you, he said, my little benefactor. I knew you were a clever one. Your Majesty, Your Majesty! A chorus of voices came through the air toward them, and Minley could see a parade of servants in the distance running across the zigzag bridge. Well, you mustn't be caught by them, the king said to Minley. Then they would find out all about my little adventures, and then where will I be? And he pulled Minley up to her feet and pushed her behind one of the giant gnarled stone carvings, kicking his rags over her. Quickly, quickly, he said, and don't say a word. I command you not to say a word or to come out until I say so. Minley clutched the rough stone and made herself as small as possible. Hundreds of footsteps were approaching like falling rain from a thund thunderstorm. What is this? the king demanded. Has war been declared on the city? Your majesty, an out-of-breath voice said. We have been searching for you. Searching for me, the king said. 
I have been here in the garden for hours. We, we must have missed you, the voice stuttered. None could find you. The guards had not seen you, and we feared... You feared the king of the city of bright moonlight had been spirited away? The king laughed. Not this time, Counselor Chu. However, I do feel the wish to commune with the moon tonight. Your majesty, the voice said. Yes, the king said decisively. Tonight, I wish to be alone in the garden with the moon. Have a meal brought to me in the Clasping the Moon Pavilion, and do not disturb me until morning. Yes, Your Majesty, the voice said, and Minley couldn't help but peek out. She saw rows and rows of finely dressed people kneeling with their heads on the ground in front of the king. Their rich silk clothing shimmered in the fading sunlight. One man, dressed in black, kneeled closer to the king, separate from the rest of the courtiers. Minley guessed he was Counselor Chu. Actually, bring me two meals, the king said and glanced toward Minley. She caught his eye and quickly shrank back out of sight. Two meals, your majesty? Counselor Chu asked with just the faintest question in his voice. Yes, two meals, the king said. I shall honor the spirit of the moon with her own meal, since she will be keeping me company. It is only fair. Yes, your majesty, the counselor said. Minley could only guess how puzzled he was, but he was well trained enough to keep it out of his voice. In an hour's time, the king said, I shall be at the Clasping the Moon Pavilion. I want the food waiting for me and nothing else. I do not wish to be disturbed by anyone this evening. Yes, your majesty, the voice said again, and Minley could hear the shuffling and swishing of silk as the group rose and took leave of the king. They've gone, the king said in a low voice. You can come out now. Minley crawled out from behind the sculpture. Well, my little friend, he said to her, now that you know who I am, Come walk with me and tell me who you are.